Hello everybody, welcome to this video clip of the Coordinator for Integrity in Ministry of the Society of the Missionaries of Africa. I'm very happy to welcome you in this first uh, video that we are launching. We are here in Rome with Philippe Doc, our webmaster and IT man for the Society. And uh, we hope with this uh, video and those coming afterward to answer some of your questions on the issue of safeguarding of minors and vulnerable adults. Uh, we speak a lot today in the church about safeguarding of minors, but what does that mean exactly? Well, the church has been uh, confronted in the last 30, 30 years with uh, a very big wave of allegation and accusation of child abuse committed by priests, and many, many uh, young people have been uh, touched by this issue and the life of many people. Uh, have been really uh, shattered by the abuse they suffer. So when we are talking about uh, uh, protection of minors and safeguarding, we are talking really about what the church does today for preventing such abuse to, uh, to be perpetrated and what it does as well to educate its clergy and uh, members in order to prevent uh, abuse, first abuse or the relapse of abuse and to make sure that all the space where the church exercises its mission are safe space for vulnerable people and especially minors and children. Which are the risks for uh, the vulnerable people? The risks are different levels. There, uh, there are risks on the physical level, first of all, and, and abuse, be it um, disciplinary violence or sexual assault or molestation, is, is a big risk for the, uh, for the physical integrity of the child and the future adult. It's also a risk for uh, his psychological health his mental health, uh, his or her mental health, um, the abuse of a child, the violence done to a child, makes really deep, deep scars into the mind of the child that can last for years, 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 many years. And uh, so it's very important to, 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 to pay attention to that. And also there are a uh, problem on the level of their spiritual life. And... Uh, uh, People who have been abused have uh, shared that they, they lost their faith, they lost trust in God and so on. So the, the, the risk for, for children are very, very high and, uh, and multiple. And of course, there are many risks to which children are exposed to, but uh, the, the safeguarding for us in our society will focus on those particular ones. How can we prevent these risks? Well, to prevent this risk is really to create a safe environment for children and that the church be a safe place for them to come and share and discover their faith and to grow in maturity. So for that we have to focus on different things. We have to focus on the space, uh, the place, the rooms where the activities are done for children. There should be open space in which everybody can come and see that everything is okay with the children, you know, parents may come by and see that their kids are safe, you know, so uh, this should not be a closed space where somebody will find itself alone with a child, so that's very important to pay attention to that. Now there is as well uh, an attention to be given to the quality of personnel that are uh, caring for the children. Uh, we have to make sure that be it catechists or youth animators or priests or deacons, seminarians or sisters, are safe to be with children. You know, they don't represent a risk for children. So that is part of what we call the screening process. And it's, all that is part of the prevention that uh, can be put in place. Now there is a, of a level uh, of intervention to, 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 to prevent abuse, which is to, for example, to intervene as soon as something is noticed, something doesn't good, we have to immediately intervene. If we see somebody going alone with a child with a room, in a room, we, we have to intervene and say, what are you doing? Why are you going with this child alone in that room? You know, we have to, to address that. 
Um, and uh, also there is uh, the level of uh, intervention on the level of education. So we have to train our, our young confrères and uh, all our confrères on issue of safeguarding. What does it mean to do a safe ministry? What it is to keep boundaries? How do I fulfill my needs that I don't need to go and to look to there in the in appropriate way and so on. So really, I mean, it's the articulation of um, of uh, prevention, intervention, and education that are the keys for uh, a safe environment for children. What about our society? What is it doing about it? Well, the society has invested a lot in that and uh, they have created different functions in, uh, in, in our structures that are the, uh, there to help us to, to deal with those issues. First of all, they have created the, the, the post I'm, uh, I'm occupying actually, which is the coordinator for integrity in ministry, which is at the level of the society there to help the society to care for, for those questions and to make sure that our environment becomes safer and safer for children. Now, to, to, to do that concretely, the, the most important actors of that is the coordinator uh, on the ground, the safeguarding delegates, as we call them, in the sectors where we work. So in each country where we work, we have uh, a safeguarding delegate, most of the countries. Some are still having some difficulties to, to come to terms with that, but uh, in most of our countries where we are working, we have a safeguarding delegate, which is somebody who has received specific training, who is in charge to assisting the sector and the provincial delegates and the, the provincial into creating those safe space for children. And also to deal with situation when uh, a problem uh, surfaces. So uh, they, they, they are there uh, to be the first respondent to, the, to those questions. Now, to help them, some have created commissions of people to, to assist them in this function. They might be psychologists, jurists, uh, lawyers, social workers, and so on. Others have joined what exists in the diocese. In some countries, the diocese have their own commission and so on, so they join in that, you know. But the, the, the important is to have somebody that can be clearly identified as the person caring for this uh, responsibility. So, and we are giving training and formation, and we are intervening in our houses of formation, our seminaries, to, to help our, our future conference to realize what it is important. And also, we are um, foreseeing things for the ongoing formation of all our conference. So, they are, they are the ones responsible for uh, the safeguarding of minors. Yeah, so the, the, the first, let's say, all missionaries of Africa are responsible for the safeguarding of children. That's the responsibility of us all. You know, it's, uh, but among of, uh, uh, all of us, there are some who have this as a particular mission. And um, the protocol that we, we set in 2015 for the safeguarding of minors very clearly state that it is the responsibility of all the missionaries. But so concretely, when is the responsibility of everybody? The risk is that is nobody who's doing it. So you need to have some people uh, who are specifically in charge of that. And they are the delegate for the safeguarding. Uh, then after those who are in charge uh, of that and responsible for that are those who are exercising leadership in our society. And they will be the provincial delegates and the provincial and of course the general council ultimately who has the upper hand over the whole process. And at the grassroots level in a parish or a mission post, what can we do? Well, it's very important because this is really where things happen. You know, the parish level or mission post, that's where the, 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 they are the contact with the children, you know. So, uh, basically, it is to, 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 to see with the safeguarding delegate that the parish is a safe space. So, uh, to, to determine that the, 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 the places where activities are done with children are safe for them, you know, to, to make sure that there is no loophole or places that could be a gray area where children might be at risk, you know. Uh, it goes as well in training appropriately those who are uh, doing ministry with the youth, you know, it could be catechists, uh, youth ministers, sisters, or seminarians, or deacons, or priests, that they are properly trained for that, so that we have to, to make sure that uh, things are happening on this level. Um, and there is as well um, a, a sensibilization of the, the community to those issues, and of the children, of course. 
uh, to make sure that they identify to whom they can raise an issue if they have a, a concern, you know. So, for example, at the back of the church could be on the bulletin board, you know, written in the local language to be understood by everybody that if they have any concern about safeguarding issues or, or, or concern with their children and things, they, they could contact this or that person, you know, be it the delegate for safeguarding, be it uh, the person in the diocese in the Catholic Education Service, uh, whoever is in charge of that. But be clearly identified with phone numbers and so on, where those people can be contacted. And of course, you know, one of the big places of, of concern in a parish for abuse it's not only the structure, but it's as well the families, you know. Many abuses are, are, are taking place in families. So there are really a need of having a true family pastoral approach uh, that uh, address with families those concerns of abuse that can exist in the parish community at large and also specifically in the structure of the church. Talking and acting about uh, safeguarding of minors, what is, what is at stake for the mission? Well, there is a double uh, challenge for church, and uh, um, the, the first one is uh, the integrity and the respect of the dignity of the children. You know, there is a strong message in the gospel and a strong warning from Jesus Christ to say to us, you know, beware of those who hurt the little one of the uh, of the Lord, uh, and the, the curse of Jesus is very strong on that. And uh, so th there is for us there uh, a uh, uh, gospel challenge to be faithful to the, to, 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 to the call of Jesus, to be respectful of the little one, to be uh, respectful of their dignity and their integrity. But it goes for all those who are vulnerable and all people who come to our parish, the respect of the human dignity. So there is a big challenge there that people who are coming into worship and receiving and learning a big God, uh, about God be respected and, and protected in their dignity. Now the second um, challenge and the second imperative for us in the mission is the credibility of the mission. Because if we want the message of Jesus Christ to go through, we have to be credible. And it means that uh, we have to make sure that people see that uh, we are putting our action where our mouths are. And uh, when we are say we are respectful and so on, we are respectful and we are not abusing them. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, last word? Yeah, so don't hesitate to send me your questions on this topic and the topics related to it. And I will answer them in the coming video clips that will be put on our internet uh, website. Uh, the next one will be uh, on the keys of safeguarding. So I will go in more in detail on these three keys, which are prevention, intervention, and education, and uh, develop that. So don't hesitate to send me your, my, uh, your question and my email address that will be shown on the screen, and stay tuned for later videos. Bye-bye. Au revoir.